Okay, I am Skyping with track star Shayla Houlihan, currently ranked number one in the world in the steeplechase, who also just so happens to be entered in the Puma Mile this Friday at Mount Sac. How are you doing, Shayla? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about this Battle of the Sexes Puma Mile and how it's going to work. Um, well, I believe the, that uh, us women were going to get a 29th second head start and then the men get to start after us and they're gonna chase us down so or <laughs> not interesting <laughs> or not yeah okay so who are the other women in the race um I'm not sure I saw that Bar Barbara Parker is entered um and I haven't really seen the full list yet so I'm not I'm not sure Okay, so what's your strategy going to be like in a race like this where you're racing women who are right next to you, so it's like, are you tactical with them, or do you run like crazy away from the men that are coming? Yeah, no, me and my coach have talked about it a little bit. Um, I think w what we've decided is, well, I did my time trial this weekend, and it went fairly well, but my legs were kind of burnt out from the week, so we had been training hard. But um, my legs are back under me, and they're feeling good. So um, I, I think I can run, you know, I'm going to run a huge PR, basically, either way. So um, I, I'm going to go out on a, on a pace that I know that I can run to finish it, and then hopefully nobody can catch me. <laughs> That's awesome. So what is your current PR? Um, in the mile, it's 458 converted. <laughs> okay, and you can pretty much run two of those in a row right now, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about your breakout year. You uh, finished up your eligibility at the University of Utah in 2008, correct? Yep, that's right. And um, I think you set the school record in the steeple in 1043. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we'll fast forward a little bit. A year later, you ran 1029 at Stanford. Yep. In your first pro season or post collegiate season. Right. And then yep. you, you dealt with some illness, I believe. Yeah, I was I was finishing my master's um, at the time, and it was just really stressful. And I think that's what just got me down. So, so I finished my master's, um, and there was I was trying to come back, trying to help out. Basically, last year I was trying to help out the girls as much as I could, um, if I could pace them to a good time or you know help them in workouts. So that that was my main where my goals were set for them, but. Um, yeah, so I got sick and just couldn't come back from it, and and I was like, well, that's fine. I know I have a lot more left in the tank, so. Now, when you say your girls, I'm just going to catch everybody up, else up to speed. I know what you meant, but you are a volunteer assistant coach at the University of Utah, yes. right? Yep. So, volunteer means you don't get paid. <laughs> so, what do you do to pay the bills? Um, I, I work at a restaurant bar downtown Salt Lake City, um, Gracie's. It's... Um, it, it's a really nice, great environment. It's like my second home. They're they're awesome. So, I do that part time, and right now my my dad's helping me out, helping me pay back my student loans and whatnot. So yeah. So that's that's really nice to have such a great support system right now, and um, yeah, so that's kind of how I how I get by. <laughs> sure. I yeah. So, gotta gotta make it work somehow, but it's tough because volunteer coaching is a lot of work. Yeah. Um and you know, obviously you seem to really care about how those women do and, um, you know, you make sacrifices for them. Um, did you have to kind of pull yourself back a little bit in order to make the big gains that you've made this year? Because now you've PR'd by 26 seconds and are leading the world, so you must have made some changes. Yeah, I mean, I did have, have to um, take myself back a little bit, but um, not a whole lot. A lot of our workouts... Um, uh, overlap, so so it works out pretty well. We'll be at the track at the same time and doing all of that. So um, so I'm there. I'm there. I, I think they understand when I can't be there. So you know, either I'm working or um, I'm doing my own workout somewhere else. So sure, and you're serving a a great purpose to them just by being inspiring and by showing them, you know, if if you do things the right way and kind of stick with it, you know, you can have this success. and So that's a big service to them. Um, you know, any coach can stand there with the, time, with the stopwatch, you know. Not yeah. everybody can train with them and inspire them the way you are. Yeah, so, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. 
it's, it's, it's nice. I, I have a lot of girls that I think um, trust me and know that they can come to me. And that's, that's kind of the main um, goal for Coach Kepler with me. He needs me to be there to um, kind of feel, void that gap between um, the women and him. Because, you know, it's hard going to a male coach for certain things and situations. And they'll approach me before, hey, should I, should I talk to Coach about this? Or, or, you know, it for me. So, sure. That's, <laughs> that's great. Now, Coach Kepler was your coach at Northern Iowa for undergrad and at University of Utah, so was he part of the reason that you moved to Utah? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, he was my coach for two years at Northern Iowa, so my freshman and sophomore year, and then he left to be the head coach at Utah, which I totally understood, and I was one of the the few that understood that because that, that's where I wanted to go. I wanted to coach, so it's like, yeah, it's a great opportunity. He needs to take that and run with it, and I guess I ran the other way with it too, and um, helped Coach Bucknum make that transition transition back into being a cross country coach again, and and uh, being directly in contact with us athletes. So it, it was good. I had Coach Bucknum for the next two years then, and and then yeah, made, made the transition back out to Utah, and I just loved it. I went and visited the campus and. Um, my, my, the program I was going into, the, the people were great. So I just, I knew it was where I needed to be. It was cool. And are you at altitude there? Yeah, we are. We're How much? In the valley, it's about 4,500. And then campus is about 4,800. Okay. So was that a big adjustment for you coming from flat sea level, Northern Iowa? Oh my gosh, it was awful. <laughs> Ask any of the girls. I would try to go out for 30-minute runs, and I'd be like, all right, I'll catch you guys later. I bet. Yeah, it was really hard for me, but um, it, it, I noticed some of the other girls, like we have um, a, a girl from Michigan that made the transition just fine, and I, I think everyone's just a little bit different. So, um, yeah, it, it was really hard for me, though, um, especially because we had to go – for indoor to Air Force, which is about 7,500 feet, about, I think. So racing there was really, really hard for me. But Coach Kepler like, had a really good plan for me. Um, we, we knew that outdoor was going to be where I was going to come out anyways and run well. And we were at TCU, luckily. That was huge for me. So, <laughs> yeah, just got through indoor and then got to have a good outdoor. <laughs> yeah. So how does that affect your speed training? Because obviously you've, you've been working on your speed for the mile this weekend, but I know that that's, it's difficult to work on your speed at altitude. Do you come down for that? Um, actually, um, I, I've kind of got to the point where the altitude, we really don't um, take my workouts and altitude adjust them anymore. So everything wow. I do, um, I'm doing it at what I think I can do at sea level. So... And I, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I it, it seems to be working just fine. So Probably mentally that's great. Yeah, it is. I, it gives me a lot of confidence. Like the time trial I did, I ran 256 high. So if you take that in altitude adjusted, it's like that's right where I want to run. So 256 for what distance? Uh, it was a 1K. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. And so that was your time trial to prep for the Puma Mile on Friday? Yes. Yep. Okay. Now, is this Puma Mile on the track or is it on the road? Yeah, it's on the track. Okay. And what time? At 7.45 Pacific. And it will be broadcast live by Flow Track, of course. Yes. And you. You will be there. I will be there. Yes. I will be there commentating and rooting for all the women. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, one, one kind of fun question for you. Um, who is your favorite female athlete? Oh, jeez. That's a good question. Ooh. I don't know. I just have people that, I don't know if there's one, because there's just so many people that have paved the way. You can have a couple, I guess. Okay, well, I'd have to say um, my stepmom, Connie. She's amazing. Um, and then also, like, just people that have helped me along my way. Um, Sarah Gray, 
who is Sarah Gall now. She's a, she used to be a steeple chaser too. So uh huh. Yeah. She really the she really inspired me to keep going when I wasn't very good at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's yeah, good. And good. your stepmom, what is she an athlete? Yeah, she um, was a professional marathoner for a while. Oh wow. Yeah, back in the eighties. So she's been around. <laughs> That's great. She's experienced all of that so. That's yeah. great. Well, good luck on Friday. I can't wait to watch. It's going to be so exciting, and I'll be yelling for you whether I'm supposed to or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a biased commentator. <laughs> I'll need it, so I'll be good. <laughs> okay, we'll rest up, and um, we'll talk to you on Friday. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Shayla. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.